you very much. Uh, Cal. Thank you very much, man. How are you? Uh, Where are you? Yeah. And how's lockdown been for you? Uh, uh, I'm in. I'm in Brighton. I'm good. Uh, I've been back at work for a while now, so it's not really been much of a lockdown anymore for me. Uh, but I accidentally took a holiday this week because we were supposed to play shows this oh, weekend, you. and I've still I forgot to cancel it. So I'm <laughs> sort of like stuck at home for a bit. So I've got a well, little lockdown extension. That's all right. Well, we've got something to do tonight. Then at least, yeah. what, what do you do for a living, Cal? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm a chef, but that's not right. McDonald's. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> what a guess. What a I guess. Yeah, was, uh, you must have been told that before, I think. <laughs> no, <laughs> just purely a guess. So, um, <laughs> so Dits, you all you all based in Brighton? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where? How many other? How many other members of the band? Is five members in total? Yeah, there's five of us. Uh, who's quite who's a few. not here then? So at the moment we're missing Anton, Caleb, and Sam. So that's what, that's guitar, bass, and drums. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you you drum now or guitar now? Guitar now. Guitar now. But you did drum at one point? Yeah, up until um, until the last single, I I pretty much played drums. But then before, there was, how many different drummers before me? Oh, God. Like, Um, there's there's been like 14 drummers, I think. (laughs) I think you think we've... There was two full-time drummers before you, uh, and then we had, I think, about three people fill in before as well. And then after that, when you've been away with idols and stuff, that's been, yeah, we've probably had about at least 10 people play drums for us at a different show. So so, do you, so do, we'll talk about this more later, but do you carry on as a band gigging when Jack's fucked off? Oh, he's trying not to. But like mm. sometimes, sometimes if we've got a show, they yeah, have yeah. to do it. Yeah, it's yeah. just uh, as and when, like we decide as it happens how good the show is. And okay, so um, if anyone's watching this and they've never listened to Dits, which I doubt it, to be fair, uh, Cal, describe the sound of Dits for me. Uh, it's uh, lots of loud guitars and. Shouting, I guess. I oh, that's not very descriptive, is it? Um, <laughs> uh, lots of lots of feedback and and noise it, with loud punk drums. I think that's the easiest way. Yeah, you agree with that, Jack? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd, I'd say we're like a, a chip shop for Gazi or <laughs> kind of a, a yeah. poor man's so some, like a less. Like a way, way, way down, um, cover, like covers band or someone. Before we move on to the to the early days, how what is Brighton like as a music scene? Is it heavy? Is there a lot going on? There's a lot of different things going on. There's um there's a couple of there's a couple of unis and stuff. So there's always fresh bands like every few years and stuff. So you always get new things. Um. There's a lot of venues. There's a lot of really good venues, uh, like Hope and Ruin and Green Door Stores. So I see. I think it's a good place to have as a scene, have as your local, like, gigging zone because uh, yeah. yeah, it's a good place to grow. I think as a band. Yeah. So, um, how long has the band been together now? Twenty. Wait, twenty twenty now. When did you start? Uh, I think our first show was twenty sixteen. Uh, yeah, but it would have been. I think we had the fourth, four years anniversary of our first show, like last month. So, okay. mm. so quite yeah. some, quite some time now. Yeah, it's getting on a bit, actually. Uh, yeah, it's when did it, it, feel, it, still, it still only feels like we've been together for like a year or two years. That's because you're never there, Jack. That probably is. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's probably more people play drums in that band than you ever did. I don't know. I reckon you've probably played yeah. more than more than half of the shows, at least. <laughs> I mean, I'd hope. So. Yeah, well, so. 
Yeah, we nearly, like, the, the next two shows we would have played would have been our 99th and our 100th shows together as a yeah. band. Uh, so, uh, so we're still they, waiting on they, those. They didn't happen, obviously. No. No, the, the first one would have been, uh, the 99th would have been the one with Idols uh, in Southampton. And then the next one would have been with John in, uh, in Tunbridge Wells, and that would have been our 100th show. Well, uh, my advice is when you're, you're 100th show, you need, you need to be a headline in that fucker. I don't think we'd counted yeah. it until, uh, until we booked it. So who would have known? <laughs> Fuck me, fucks up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not, I mean, not, not the supporting Johnny's a fuck up because they are, they <laughs> are superb. But um, yeah. you need to take that glory. So, mm. um, how look, so where did you all meet all those years uh, ago? Are you all Brighton residents? You all come from Brighton? No, we're all. I mean, we're all actually from the West Country roundabouts. Like, uh, no, I'm from the, I'm, the Midlands. Not, not yeah, well, he, yeah. he's from Worcester, and I'm from uh, near Gloucester, and so is Caleb. Uh, and Anton's from Bath, uh, and Sam's from uh, Devon. So we're all sort of like that corner of the country. Okay. Yeah. So. Did you all move to Brighton as a collective, as a group of people? No. Uh, me and Caleb did, because we were going to uni and like we knew each other from college. And then uh, we bumped into Anton at one of these freshers parties. And it was, I think we saw, um, we saw Mets and Lightning Bolt play. And we were like, oh, we wanted to start a band. We wanted like that. And then he was like, oh, yeah, yeah let's do that. So that's sort of how that, that we ended up meeting Anton. And then we picked up Jack not too long afterwards. I think it was it can only have been like I don't know, six months after our first show uh, that we got, actually got Jack in. So. It gear, right? Yeah, it was. It would have been two thousand seven, start two thousand seventeen that you played that the first show with us. Had you oh, yeah. both? Had you both been in bands before, or was Ditch your first band? Yeah. Uh, I, it was. It was yeah, my first. I mean, I've, I've been in it. Bit. Okay. Yeah. I, mm. I mean, I've, I've been in one before. You, kind of beat it off a little bit. But. Well, as a drummer. No, as a guitarist originally. Oh, before that. Yeah. Back and, and forth. Yeah, bought loads of pedals. There's bought loads of gear, and then the band split. Up, so, and then started uh, to. <laughs> so um, um, annoying. Yeah. When <laughs> do you remember your first rehearsal? Uh, yeah. I remember your oh, first dear. rehearsal. Yeah, that was at Small Pond Studios, yeah. and I remember like it's we really were really, we, yeah, we were worried because we'd already been through another drummer who who'd left pretty quickly, and I remember just like Jack coming in, and we were like, we were like, we're gonna have to teach him the songs, we have to go through it all, but he'd had the he'd had like the EP that we had out there, and. He, like we went in there and he was like, oh, so which one do you want to play? And we were totally like, oh, shit. He actually knows what he'd be <laughs> like. I hadn't thought that that was going to be a possibility, but... It's weird. It was it was one of the like the most awkward two hours I think I'd ever spent up until that point. Like, because we're, we're all like quite shy as, as individuals. I mean, I don't think Caleb said a word to me. I don't think you said anything until about an hour into it. Yeah, I think I'd only we just sort of played the song. <laughs> like, like... like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was really, it was so funny. Yeah. You don't make the noise of a shy group of people. Mm. Yeah, awkward. I think that's. Yeah, that's the cognitive dissonance <laughs> that we have. Yeah. Mm. yeah so you did, also... <laughs> you did your homework, Jack. You learnt the songs. Well done. Yeah. I learnt them in my Peugeot 106 by drumming on the steering wheel, I think, from a drive from Brighton to Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I was literally just like this, on the M4, driving back. Yeah. And you got the gig. Did they tell you that night you got the gig? I think, I think, yeah, at that time kind of suggested it and nobody said anything, so I still <laughs> wasn't too sure after the rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a show. Can't have been that long after that, so... Yeah. What um so influences wise your musical influences that, that came in you must have all brought something different to the to the, the group that created this big wall of sound of, that you are yeah um who 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 influenced you 
I think when we were when we were first started, it was bands like Mets was something that we all agreed on. Uh, and girl band as well was just like they sort of just released uh, their first album when that when we started formed, and that was a big influence on us. And then there's just there's loads of other things like Fugazi and the Jesus Lizard, all the '90s like post hardcore bands. I think they've had a big influence on us, and the bands like At the Drive In and stuff as well. There's sort of the the chaos of all of those things. We try and sort of take a bit of everything and put that in. You can, it, yeah, I can hear the influences. I can hear the girl band in it. I can hear the Mets in it as well, without a doubt. Mm. It's a lovely noise. Um, it's, oh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to describe it. It's fucking hard. I think it's quite hard to, to pinpoint exactly what you sound like because it is just a beautiful um, amount of um, just, it's a wall of sounds and I fucking hate that terminology but it is and it's beautiful feedback and thumping thumping drums and stuff like that your vocal cal is that did that come that quite naturally was that just what happened when you started singing i don't know i was trying to sing for ages i think if you listen to the to the ep and then you listen to the new tracks it just it sounds a lot i think it sounds really different to that but i was trying mm. to sing ages before that and i was just uh i was trying to do things that had like pitch to them and stuff and it's sort of I don't know I think just trial and error and learning what my voice sounds like um, sort of made it sound the way it does and I found that just doing the sort of dry monotonous thing works quite well and then all the different ways of like making it louder and quieter I just had to learn it all yeah and I still learn it all the time because you it's hard to work out what your voice actually sounds like unless you hear it back it's recorded kind of a cut. thousand times. It kind of... Where like everything else is going like batshit crazy, that the vocals are doing, like you said, dry. So I think it lends itself quite well. I think yes. your vocals, you know I mean? your, for me, your, especially when you listen to the, to the recordings on, online, your, your vocals got a, a, a definite strut to it. I want to describe it describe it it's like there's a strut and a swagger to it especially in the upper tracks and it's um it fucking it fits so well that's what i without a doubt without it's one of the best sounding style of vocals i've heard in this big fucking wall of that you create so um i know i love it so i'm a big fan of it so well done oh, i appreciate that <laughs> thank you very much do you remember your your first gig yeah i do it was um it was at a place called the prince albert uh, in Brighton, it's uh, it's just just by the train station. It's like um, it's kind of like an old school rock bar, and then they've got the venue upstairs. Um, we just played it on our last tour. We, I remember the first gig that we ever played. There was about ten people there to watch us, and we just like we just sold it out on our last tour, and that was a big a big step for us because oh. we just realised that the difference mm -hmm. in the what that room looks like with people and without people. But I remember Jack's first gig too. Um, it was at Green Door Store, which is legendary Brighton yeah, venue. That, that, the Jack's shit internet in Portugal. Mm. <laughs> Do you remember your first gig? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Has he gone again? <laughs> yeah, well, with, with this lot, yeah. yeah. Well, it works. <laughs> okay, so you can just look pretty for us. Um, how long after mm. rehe your first rehearsal, Cal, was the first gig? I just um, do that. <laughs> it was about, I think, five five months or so. We had of just sort of like practicing and writing songs. And we still, we've never ever had enough songs, to be honest. Uh, but and we never practiced enough. So uh, five months, I think, it took us to play our first gig after our first practice but do you are you still guilty of that not practicing enough we we have like stints of going really really hard for a little bit like um we just we just have one little bit um after lockdown eased a bit uh, we sort of found ourselves a place where we could go and there's nobody there and we could practice so we we ended up going there a few days in a row and just sort of going for eight hours. And that was, um, that was good for a little bit. But, um, mm. 
And some sometimes, like if we've got a tour or something, we'll try and get three in in a week. But usually, we just don't practice enough. What is the um, the writing process like, Jack? Can you hear me, Jack? Are you there, or is that just a picture of you now? <laughs> I, I can hear. Yeah. So, 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 sorry, I was I was, hey. was going to see if I could go. That's all right. That's all right. When oh, so when you write, say again. You, you, when you write, do you write as a band, all five of you in the room? It's weird. Yeah, I mean. Traditionally, we haven't really. This has kind of been like, what, can you hear me? I said it. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's usually one person has an idea. Ish. This is a nightmare. I'm going to try and get on my phone. Give me two secs. Go on, then. I'll ask you the same question yeah. then, Cal. So, are you, <laughs> do, you have, do you have like the main songwriter? Or do you all uh, write? No, we, we, all, we all sort of put in as much as, as we can. Like, everybody just sort of puts ideas in. Uh, we've got like a good Google Drive that's got everything loaded so we can just like put somebody's demo in their own folder and find it really easily so we okay. try and go off that and then we take things to practice but sometimes we jam stuff out um, and then usually I'll just have words written already somewhere that I could just put put to something that somebody else has got and that's sort of how songs get picked into being properly fleshed out is if I've got something for for a particular riff or whatever that's what we might sort of work on that as a group a bit more but there's like there's no one set process at all because okay. we've tried so many different ways and has it been can you hear us Jack now are you there yeah okay I can hear you, yeah. uh, has I can it been hear you. Jack has it been hard when, when when we all went into lockdown first like March time how, was there a massive gap where you didn't get mm. together as a band yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was a, a couple of months, wasn't it, before, before we three, we, three before or four. I don't, yeah. we didn't. I don't think we saw each other until uh, June. No, it, it was absolute. It was ages. Yeah, and that must have been shit. Mm. Yeah, it was all right, but it we, was had, pretty we crap. had Zoom calls. We, <laughs> we we still stayed in touch. We had a uh, we had a few Zoom calls, and we did actually write some bits of songs over that, just passing files back and forth. So. I think we were pretty much as connected as we'd normally be, to be honest. Okay. So, 2016, um, EP1 comes out. Mm. Um, all self-funded? All recorded locally? Uh, yeah, we recorded it ourselves at uh, a place called Brighton Electric, which is sort of the local big studio in Brighton. Um, we were all, well, at least me, Caleb, and... Uh, and Jack as well. We we all studied uh, recording, so okay. That was sort of, so we did it ourselves. Um, we haven't done that since. We do everything. We do everything with uh, one guy called Ben now because I mean he was sort of teaching us how to record anyway. So it just feels really natural to record with him. Um, but yeah, we did all of that one just on our own, and that's why it sounds like that. <laughs> It does sound quite early. It's the lovely noise, though. It's, but it does sound, yeah. Compared to the last song you launched, you can hear there's a there's four there's a four year gap between them, and that's it's good. So um, first track on that album, I am Chris Martin. Yeah. Well, why that title? I'm going to ask you. Because uh, I mean, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but there's, um, there's a full track called I Am Damu Suzaki, and. Um, I, I'm a big Fall fan, so I saw like I just kind of wanted to do a funnier take on that, and I thought Chris Martin would, like the songs. The songs about sort of arrogance in a way, and like how confidence can be perceived as arrogance. I thought Chris Martin was the perfect person, yeah, for, for that. So, and he's so far away from Chris Martin, and his sound yeah. it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I thought, I thought that was funny. Basically, so, Jack, are you there? I'm here. I'm on my phone now. Really like lovely, mate. <laughs> so much better. This is Jesus. <laughs> Did you is, turn a light on as well? It just it looks so much brighter in there right now. Yeah, I, I think the camera on his phone's a lot better than the laptop. Yeah, it is, mate. Well done. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's nice of you to join us, Jack. I'm yeah. I'm awfully sorry about that. I, I, I didn't think it'd be a problem, but that's because you're on holiday. That's why. Fucking mum was away. Oh uh, yeah, kind of with a long with a long black jumper on. With a long black jumper on, yeah. Um, 
20, so 2016 was EP1. Yeah. Sold at gigs, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. No, it's never, it's never been put into a physical... Of course, of course, yeah, because the, uh, the, the EP that came out last month was the first one. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. that was because we hadn't done it and we were like, oh, we probably should do this. <laughs> so we grabbed all of the singles and we were like, let's get them in a, in a, in a way that we can give them to people who ask for them. Because that was so it, where, that's... Where was EP1? Just set like SoundCloud and Bandcamp and stuff? Is that where it's set? Uh, originally, Bandcamp originally stuff, it was just it? Bandcamp and uh, we had it on YouTube as well, but we, uh, we didn't do Spotify until not for ages just because we weren't that bothered by it and on, i mean i use it all the time now but i never used it then so um and i, I band camp was the one that i thought was the best yeah so. do you love it or hate it spotify is a is a, is a wonderful thing and it's it yeah. is, it's just convenient like it is convenient really yeah but easy. It, it puts everything it puts it all into your lap and your ears doesn't it so within, within seconds so so that was 2016 so 2018 two years later Seek an arrangement arrives. Mm. So between now, for, for 2016, 2018, Jack, I'm going to ask you now because you can hear me. Just gigging, playing. I'm not. Sure. I mean, that, that was it. Was not long after I, I, I joined, so I, I'm not really sure what went on before. But yeah, I guess well, I mean, I mean, we were gigging a lot and we were, we were rehearsing a lot. I mean, that, that was a song I'd had for ages, and I think we just so, decided to record and release it. So, Seeking Arrangement obviously wasn't the only song you'd written over that period. Why? I mean, it's one minute, 38 seconds of absolute fucking wah. It's, it's glorious. Short, but glorious. Yeah. Why that song? Why, why record and release that song? I think because it was so short. <laughs> yeah, it was just so easy to do. I mean, it was Actually, I, I, I said that the last one we recorded, that, that EP1 was the last one we recorded ourselves but we did actually do so you could arrange it ourselves as well i forgot about that yeah yeah and the video the video done all on the cheap uh no we got a, we've got a mate who is has is done doing all of our videos because he's because we like working with him uh okay. called jay yeah um uh so we uh I think it was it was only cheap, relatively speaking. But yeah, it was a uh, nice <laughs> rates. Yeah, but that yeah, exactly. He's somebody that you really like working with. It's worth yeah. uh, it's worth putting money into it. So, and it's kind of half the length of a normal song anyway. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> one day. <laughs> so it was cheap, though. Yeah, of course. Discount. Yeah. yeah. Um, twenty nineteen, gay boy, total ninety. All right, both arrive. Um, Total Nightly come out in Alcapot Records. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Because I, I was looking back and it was the first one that mentioned the label that was connected to it. Um, oh, well, um, uh, Seeking Arrangement and Gay Boy actually came out on uh, Permanent Creeps Records, but there was no no physical thing there. But they they put us out. There's a guy called Lloyd. He does That, that label's got a lot of really good bands on it as well seems to pick up bands just as I start listening to them and I'm like, oh, that's another good <laughs> band there. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we, we moved to Alcopop because they could do do the physicals and stuff. And yeah. that's why we decided to sort of go go to them. So 2019, all right, you're releasing two, two, two songs come out in 2019. 2019 was the year pretty much, Jack, you must have been away from most of it. 2018, yeah. 2019. Mm -hmm. So, how was that a challenge for you as a band? Dits when Jack was gone for so long. Yeah, yeah, it was annoying because there was. I mean, I can remember the the specific idols tours. Like, I remember the, the Joy the tour. Yeah. Or because that was because we wanted to do a bunch of stuff then. I think uh, over over time we've got a lot better at working around it, and like. Uh, just knowing when Jack's up, like our Google calendar is really, really well put together now. Like <laughs> that's the only where, way to do it. Uh, where dense. is he now? Where is he now? Can we do it? So mm -hmm. for anyone watching that might recognize you, Jack, um, you are the man that stands on the stage and holds Bowen's lead. <laughs> yeah. The cable holding guy. <laughs> and that's, that's your, that's your, that's your entire. 
you do have a, a bigger role, I believe, with that brand. Well, oh, yeah, I kind of, well, fix, fixing everything that gets broken, I guess, or trying to fix everything that gets broken to a point. Sometimes it is impossible. When, yeah, when, did you, when, did you, when did you start working with idols? That was the, the, um, the in-store tour they did on Joy. So, Rough Trade, that was your first day? Yeah, first day was, is it Rough Trade Bristol? Oh, no, it was, it was the, my first day was the day after they did, I drove, I drove them to Rough Trade East, sorry, Rough Trade West to do the sign-in. And then they played a show at Prism in Kingston. And I think that was, that was my first show. And the next day they went to Brighton and then got arrested on the motorway. Yeah, we got done on the motorway for being overweight. And then for some reason, the police officer thought the van was out. It's, it's for some reason, he thought I wasn't insured on it. Because there was, there's, with most, with most van, like flea hires, you, you, the insurance only covers people over 25. And I was 23 at the time. But that one, if you're driving at South, South High, you could drive at 23. But basically, the car put the side of the road, didn't want to take you notice. Got the van impounded. So we had to get another van. <laughs> Delivered up to that evening. So you were driving that van? I was driving that van, yeah. Brilliant. So this is your second day in the job? Yep. <laughs> and you got the drowning van. Well done, mate. Well done. It was, it, was, it was probably the worst day of work I think I've ever had. <laughs> it was all sorted. In it. You know, the, the, the show still happened. And it was it all got sorted out. I, I didn't get found guilty of driving without insurance in the end, which was quite nice. That, that was... Yeah. Before we move on and talk about dits again, how many, I want to ask you this, how many Idol shows have you done? I haven't counted, but it's, I mean, the first, the first, the first big tour was, was about 56, I think, in three months. Or oh, it was 56 days, and there were obviously a few days up in between that. And then, it's got to be around 100, 150, maybe oh, 200. Oh, at least, um, yeah. yeah, 200, I'd say. You're there yeah, all the fucking time. Yeah. So, um, highlights for me, you you were John, you were John, John Beavers in Benidorm. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a highlight. It was hard work, <laughs> massive hard work. Big fucking boots to fill. Yeah, like that, that was, I, I think, I, I'd never practised a set so much. I mean, it, there was even more than a ditz one, obviously, on a proper drum kit, not the steering wheel of my car this time. But, I, I, I mean, I tried to <laughs> that for weeks, and for, for months and months and months and months before. Yeah, it was, and I had, I had a couple of rehearsals with John as well, which was just great. Uh, having having a practice with like an amazing drummer, and not really being a proper drummer myself was was just, I mean, itself was it was like a great experience. But yeah, I think it, it went, really I think it went down well. And then you also played the role of uh, Boeing on Soccer AM. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was that was. Pretty, yeah. And he yeah, missed the like kick. He ball. missed the kick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a shotgun. So I, I, I actually, I, well. I like to think I used to be quite good at football when I was around like 16 years old. Uh, no, you fluffed that one, mate. Oh, it, yeah. was, it was awful. He's never going to live that one down. <laughs> uh, no. Is it a gift anywhere? Someone made it into a gift yet? Have you fucked it up? Oh, they, that's it needs to idea. happen. It needs to happen. I don't know if it's on YouTube anymore. Um, I will find it. If someone's got it, we'll find it for sure. Yeah, um, somebody will have it. So, so, no, I've been tagged in it about five times. If you go, if you go on my profile and find videos that I've been tagged in, you'll find it easily. It'll be there somewhere. So, yeah. if uh, last question about Idol Jack, we could talk about for ages. If Lee uh, went ill, could you stand in for Lee on the quick? Possibly. I mean, yeah. Do you, you got, of... Yeah, you just got to plug in twenty-four guitar pedals and make it do anything you want. Oh yeah, but it's some some of the like the the, the cause he plays in them. Um, like the, the the bridge in Samaritans, that does he, he does some really snazzy stuff, and obviously he moves around a lot as well, which is something I can't. I can't, I can't really play a move. Yeah, I mean, I could try. I look like a complete twat, but I think get being able if, to play and move around like they do would be is, is, is a lot more difficult than, than you think. Could you stand in for Dev? He's irreplaceable. But could you stand in for Dev? No, the, the, I mean, that's pretty irreplaceable. I mean, I could never do the backing vocals. The, 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 <laughs> never. And then, like, even, even Dev's parts, like in Danny Ladalco, like his right hand is just constantly going throughout the whole song. And he, he like, he cuts the strings as well. And that's how he gets it to sound like the way it does. It was part of the way he gets it to sound the way it, it does as well. I mean, that's, that would take practice. And that's like building up muscle and resistance in your hands of like dig in and cut something for like, an hour and a half. I'd, I'd, I'd he's a know. machine, yeah. He's yeah, because yeah. he is. 
and he carries that bass so fucking low down. Um, uh, yeah, which makes it even harder, yeah. Which is why his knees are going poor bastard. <laughs> so, um, okay, thank you for that. That was good. Uh, we'll, right, we'll, thank you. We'll get you on one day for an idol chat, completely about an idol chat. Tell us all the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2018 arrived. Dicks, 2018 arrived. Role Model gets released. Mm. What, what, what month was that? 2020, sorry. This year, Role Model. So we released it in May. We recorded it last year. We went, we went up to Leeds to record that with a, a guy called Alex Greaves, who does, I mean, he's done a lot of, a lot of stuff that I'm sure everybody's familiar with, like Heavy Lungs. Uh, he's just done the new Lice. He's done Spectres recently. Uh, Luma, Bedroom. Uh, uh, but I like just a, everybody pretty much. So we went up to do that with, uh, to do that with him. Um, which was good, interesting. Yeah, yeah. so that, you released that in May. Yeah, it took us about yeah seven months in between. Not, May this year yeah. during lockdown. Then yeah, mm -hmm. and so, so just put it out. Can't promote, can't promote it, can't gig it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's we nice. wanted to do it before our before our tour. We wanted to have it ready then uh, mm -hmm. at the start of February, but. Um, we just we hadn't we didn't get around to getting all of the bits done and everything sorted, so it ended up being a May release instead. And then um, your cover, Peaches cover, "Fuck the Pain Away" comes out came out last month, beginning of this month, early this month. Um, that, came, that came out last year, didn't it? Okay, we, we actually we put that out in we did a thing in February where we had that. Uh, this came from Jack at Alcopop. He had this idea where we'd write the download code for it on a peach, and uh, he put this he put this peach in his office and had it filmed. And as the peach rotted, the download code disappeared, and that was his way of keeping it there for a limited time. <laughs> uh, like so, I I don't know I don't know how well it works because it was really like hard to sort of work out how the download code. Uh, connected to everything, but um, it was it was a cool idea. But we had to put it out <laughs> properly, properly, because we wanted to have it on the record. So yeah. So what was the so what made you decide to throw these five tracks together and get them on vinyl? Because uh, I, I, I think we can record anything else. I need to, I need uh, to pop up for two seconds. I'll be back in a minute. I'm not running away. I think He's, it was a uh, takeaways arrived. <laughs> I think it's Idols Need Him or something. <laughs> of course, yes, of course. So, uh, um, it was just yeah, so those five songs, yeah. yeah, we like they were just sort of the last five singles. And we we had people asking us since we released Seek and Rage, and, oh, could, is it going to be available on vinyl? And we were like, probably not right now. We'll get something someday. And then it just sort of, when, when lockdown hit, it was like the start of lockdown. We were like, Oh, we need to we need to put something together, and now is probably the time to do it because we, it's not like we're going to have anything new. So uh, we just sort of collected the last couple of singles and put them on there as uh, as something to do. And it's done well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that we did it. Yeah, yeah. It must be I nice think... to have it must be nice to have something on vinyl eventually after all these yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, it is actually. It was like I'd always been a big collector, especially when I was a kid. So, like, finally holding something was quite nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Were there, um, I mean, with, obviously, it's a great track. Um, were there other songs that you considered covering, or was it always that? Uh, yeah, there was. We, we, um, we, we've, we've, we've got a new one as well, we're considering, haven't we? Which one's that? The Oh, yeah. Oh. But the the one that we we were considering doing, um, uh, "Ain't It Funny" by Danny Brown, but I I just I couldn't I couldn't do the rap in it didn't sound <laughs> right, <laughs> and he's you don't you don't like he's too quick as well like it's I didn't realize how impressive it was until I was trying to rap along with it. Yeah, yeah. But, is the whole thing is, is the whole thing a rap song or is it got like a got all section in it? Well, it's just got a really big, heavy beat, and that's why we wanted to do it because we knew that if it was guitars, it would have sounded huge. But uh, we couldn't get it to sound right, so we didn't end up doing that. We didn't, we 
I sort of suggested peaches just on the on the offhand, and we were like, "Oh yeah, that seems quite easy," and it all sort of came into place quite quickly. He's died again. Look. Oh yeah. Um, so, um, twenty twenty. Obviously, you had you had a tour beginning of the year mm. in February. You had the Idol show due, due for. Fuck, I can't remember when that was now. Uh, I think it was 17th of May originally. Was it? And no, it was got, 17th of March, rather. Yeah, and then it got put back and then it never happened either, and which was a shame because there was a lot of people looking forward to that, seeing you two yeah. guys. Bill. I'm hoping, I've said to Mark Ben that they, whenever Idols get back out of there, the first show needs to be that rescheduled Southampton yeah, show. I, I, yeah, I really wanted to play that. I was quite excited about that. It would have been, a, it would have been our biggest UK show that we'd ever done. Because uh, I, I, something like this huge, huge theatre, isn't it? That, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And it would have been not. I've, I've only seen you live once, which was um, the old day at the windmill last. Oh uh, yeah. Remember with um, who played it? frauds? Yeah, frauds uh, and table scraps. And, yeah. Uh, Lazy bones. They're friends of ours. There was um, uh, sugar horse. There? Sugar horse played it from Bristol. Sugar horse played that. There's a couple of others as well. I'm definitely forgetting somebody that I really there enjoyed. There was about so. six or seven. It was a good day. But, um, yeah. That was story. I, I can't remember what happened. I was going to come and see it at Lexington at the beginning of the year. That never happened. Then obviously the, the Idol sport came up. Happy days. Never happened. So well, let's try and make that happen. Yeah. What, I, yeah. What are your plans, Cal, for when this, when all this shit finishes and we and it's all, whenever that will be, fucking hell, good me for years yet, but what, what's the plans? Is there an album coming? Is there an album? I think back? I think that's what we what we're doing now is that we've been writing a lot more songs, or we're trying to get ourselves a list of you know twenty or thirty songs that we can sort of turn into ten songs and then have yeah. that. I think I think that is our next goal before we start thinking about other things. We've got a, we've got another tour booked in that I think we're announcing soon as well. So um, the next yeah, year, a few, yeah, okay, yeah, it wasn't worth trying to put something <laughs> together for October and then it never happens. So. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's an album. It's, it's, it's most wanted. People do want an album. Fucking hell, look, he's arrived again. Hello, Jack. What an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Jesus. It's because you're, you're in your fucking second home, in your villa in Portugal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> On that big fucking oh. wage you get from working for idols, you can afford but to do this. <laughs> it's not mine, it's the in-laws, so... <laughs> Yeah. The end laws. It is, yeah. The end laws. Yeah, you want to yeah you're that. not married yet. Yeah, not yet. Yeah, not yet. So <laughs> we, we were talking, um, Jack. We were talking about next oh, year. Seriously, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about next year. We'll carry on talking about next year. Let's fuck off again. Um. I'm literally coming to the end of my questions now. We were going to jump into the quick fire, which I'll do quite happily with you, Cal, on your own. If he pops, if he pops back in, then at me days. But if he doesn't, mate, this is all yours. Thank you very much for having a chin whack pop with me. Um, yeah, no, no worries. Sorry about and, him. It's all right. And we'll, 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 it's all right. We'll handle it. So uh, <laughs> there's, you've got about 20 questions each. He, I won't do his ones because he's fucked off again. I'll give you your 20 questions, Cal. Very quick fire. No thinking. Top of your head. Most of them are pretty stupid. You ready? All right. Let's go. What, let's go. What's your favourite ditch track? Uh, no thanks, I'm full. Your favourite city? In, in the world? Yeah. Uh, Rotterdam. Westlife or Boyzone? Uh, I don't know. Westlife? Yeah, that's the right answer because Ronan keeps okay. right. Well done. Thank you very much. Morrissey, yes or no? Uh, to, to a degree. Like, <laughs> I'm happy you would like, because if you'd gone no straight away, I would be quite upset. But you, you're you allowed to go, not sure. Uh, I mean, like, I, I, like, I like the music. That's, that's enough. That's enough. Yeah. Cal, who would play you in a film? If there was a film of the life of Ditz, who would be who who would play you? Jesus. Uh, is it like is it like Mastermind? Can I pass? Is it? No, 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 no. Come on, copyright. 
Quick fire. I thought I was going to be better than this. Um, I think I think I'd like to play myself, to be honest. Okay, I'll, I'll break that. into action. Um, if you were a pair of shoes, what pair of shoes would you be? Uh, I guess uh, probably like some pink Converse. I think I'd be nice, comfortable. Yeah. Cake or pie? Uh, savory pie. Okay. You know, I haven't got sweet, no sweet tooth there. Yeah, sometimes, but <laughs> I like a savory pie. When you were a teenager, what posters did you have in your bedroom wall? Uh, I had, um, I, I used to just have all the ones out of my, uh, out of, out of my records. I had loads of ones from uh What oh, okay. Yeah, I used to just have like all of the uh all of the pullouts from records all over my wall. So it's like uh, Who was uh it was a band called uh Self Defence Family. I had like all of their records for years. So I always had like so much of their stuff. Cal, okay, what's your worst internet purchase? Um We've all had one. I've bought lots of clothes that hasn't that haven't fit, <laughs> and then have been a pain in the ass to send back. So uh, don't ever buy anything from uh, from Wish. Don't ever buy clothing from Wish. Is my I advice. Actually, I got I got a cowboy hat from <laughs> dur during lockdown, and it's really good actually. Yeah, because yeah, but you don't yeah. buy clothes. So when the clothes arrive, they're like that big. You're like, that's not gonna fucking fit me. Yeah. All the other stuff's grand. Cal, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't eat meat anymore, but I think that's pretty strange that I have eaten meat. Okay. I'll take that. Yeah. Okay, I'll take that. What's your favourite smell? Uh, lavender. Who would be your dream support slot? If you could support anyone, who would it be? It'd definitely be a Fugazi reunion. That would be the dream for me. Uh, very important question. Marmite, yes or no? I can take it or leave it. Uh, I have no, I've off. got no strong opinion. I, I, like, I quite like Twiglets and stuff. I wouldn't choose to put it on my toast, but if it was the only thing that was there, I'd go for it. it. See, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I don't get this sitting on the fence. For me, it's a yes or a no answer. You're about I the third person that's gone, oh, I'm not really bothered. It's a weird answer. What's your best ever album? Uh, Repeater by Fugazi. Uh, Favourite insect? Butterfly. Oh, nice. Mm. No, I, was, I googled butterflies the other day. I had no idea. I'm going to tell you this now. You know, when they're a caterpillar yeah. and, they, and they go into the cocoons, it takes nine days. You've got to learn this now. Nine days from caterpillar to butterfly. And they break down to a liquid. Literally a liquid. They, they break liquid, down to a liquid. That's they, that's they break down to just a liquid, and from that liquid grows the butterfly. How that's, fucking amazing is that? I thought oh, that's really the, caterpillar, the caterpillar grew wings. I want to. I want to. I want to see that as a see an X-ray of that growing, yeah. like a. I was amazed. One of those time lapse videos. <laughs> that would be really good. A time lapse X-ray video of inside a cocoon. That's what I want to see. So caterpillars don't grow grow wings. It blew my mind. They, they, they literally die in a dead liquid and then come back to life as a butterfly. Fucking amazing. I wonder if it's the same consciousness then. That's really, that's really bizarre. Is there any sort of brain there that just sort of stays? No, no, well, no what he said, they're literally dead. They're literally just, just gone. And then, so it's, uh, a, it's a totally different... That's, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> Isn't God amazing? Yeah, wow. Um, Cal, what's your favourite ever film? Uh, the, the original Dumbo. Oh. Yeah, I used to watch it every day as a kid. Um, early morning or late at night? Um, uh, late, late at night. Okay, going into the early morning. Yeah, well, I, I've been getting up for work at at three o'clock in the morning, so. 
shit. Um, what's the most rock and roll thing you've ever done? Oh, I've definitely like been drunk and told a crowd to fuck off or something before, <laughs> like which I apologise for now. Uh, that's not that's not how you win people over. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, so yeah, just probably something like that. So your last two questions: describe dicks in three words. Um, loud. Annoying, uh, and uh, I- indecisive. Okay. So, describe your self count in three words. Um, annoying. Loud. Yeah. <laughs> loud. I, I could use all those three. Maybe I should come up with a fresh one though. Um, no, I'm just gonna have to go with those three again. Okay. I would take that. Um, yeah. And what I was going to get, and I'll take, he's fucked off now. Describe Jack in three words for me. Unreliable. Uh, yeah, unreliable, unavailable. Uh, uh, um, long, long black jumper in the summer. Yeah, shit, internet connection. That's three. Yeah. Uh, Villa in Portugal. Yeah. He's sick <laughs> laughing now, isn't he? Um, Cal, thank you very much for your time. Hey, no worries. That. That's been really, really fun. Good stuff. Um, and I hopefully, when all, when all this shit finishes and goes over, um, we can get out there and party again and we'll come and see your band. But uh, thank yeah. you very much. Catch you later. Wife, and then Ben will cut us off. Hey, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.